Welcome to the program. My name is Steve Elzey. I'm the CEO of Your Sanctuary TV. We are here today with a world-renowned artist, Lucas Block, and I am just thrilled beyond speech right now. I hope I can uh, ask him a few questions, but anyway, Lucas, welcome to the program. Well, great to be here. Thank you. Thanks for accepting um, my invitation. Appreciate it. And uh, you are world-renowned. I mean, people all over the world know about you, correct? Well, nowadays, that, I don't know what that means, because we all Facebook, we all do that stuff. So we got a lot of friends. A lot of friends. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, the work's all over. Yeah. And then, when, but in the beginning, um, did you always want to be an artist, or was it something you aspired to? No, it's an addiction. You know, you get started, ah. and then you keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was a good place to go at a certain point. I'm from the 60s. You know, everybody was an artist. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. We were all artists in our, in our own yeah. minds. And somehow uh -huh. the, the job thing didn't work out. <laughs> but the art thing worked out, right? You keep doing something long enough and something's bound to happen. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, you, you're also very, very talented and, and you, well, you, you've got some, some wonderful work out there. I'm a lucky person to be able to do it. Yeah, isn't that great yeah. to, to be passionate about something and yeah. actually make a living doing it? Well, a, a living is another word, but yeah, it's been bumpy at times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a life, I'll say that. Vertical. Yeah. <laughs> it's vertical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not a CEO, but... Yeah, yeah. You know. well, I, I have an entire cadre of one employee, it's, so it's well, easy. You know, uh, the HR no, is no problem. That's a, that's a lot more than I have. <laughs> Now, did you did you go to school and study art, or how did you come across your your, your talents? You know, you start for various reasons, and you end up doing it for other reasons. But okay. uh, yeah, I I think it was the '60s was kind of a time when all teenage kids were saying, "Oh yeah, I want to be a rock star, and I mm -hmm. want to do all those things." And uh, I had been an immigrant uh, several times, different places in the whole shebang. Traveled around a lot with family, mm -hmm. and I think uh, art just sounded like a place I could actually find myself. Okay. It was a, an escape pod, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the start. Okay. I don't think I knew what I was doing. My education was pretty limited in terms of art. Didn't mm -hmm. go to art school. Mm -hmm. Took two years worth of college art. Mm -hmm. Figured I was ready for the world. It was the 60s. You know? Right, right. Art classes weren't that specific in those days. It was touchy-feely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I touchy feely for a while. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and then, in, in terms of, of the, the, the actual mechanics, though, were you, do you have a, a skill set, natural? You could draw? I could, I did. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I was a teenager, and I started really as a, as doing drawings, ink drawings, I was very much fascinated by Beardsley and those sorts of uh, oh. artists at the time, mm -hmm. uh, late Victorian type stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I started painting, things changed. Okay. And I had instructors that were action painters, and I took mm -hmm. on action painting a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm Dutch. Okay. And I like the control okay. of modernism, minimalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least that's sort of how I started with it. Uh, I didn't have this, the cultural and social context for... Uh, discussing things through visual stimuli. I was more from the acid age of Bay Area rock okay. <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, the whole visual aspect of, of, of arts was what interested me. So that's sort of how it started. Mm -hmm. You said Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area yeah. in the 60s? Yes, Palo Alto to be precise. Okay. Uh, I, I, I played guitar in a little band and uh, you know took my lessons. This is always my favorite little uh, guess what I did when I was a teenager? I was a student of Jerry Garcia, and uh, you know that whole thing was going on when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. So mm -hmm. that was a big influence of, of that time. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. And now, um, as far though, but but as far as a profession, did you say I'm going to make money doing this, or you just you just kept doing it until it actually worked out where you were making money? <laughs> uh, well. You know, there's not a lot of money in the game unless no. you're really big time. That's right. <laughs> uh, I I think it's just the way that you could you, you don't have a lot of choices. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, uh, I I remember an interview with a jazz pianist who once said, uh, you know, after 30 years of playing jazz and not making a living, I thought I'd do something else. And mm -hmm. she said, I found out I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> okay. So it, it, it's sort of one of those. I did try uh, some commercial art things. I thought, oh, oh I could be a, an art director, designer. 
-hmm. and that was a way to be artistic but there's no relationship and uh, it's just a job like mm -hmm. everything else and you, creativity is one thing art mm -hmm. is another right and, right and making that happen requires some other commitments mm -hmm. so that I you know that's just a learning curve sure again you start with one idea and then you find other things as one or as you progress or I progressed anyway I don't know how other people do it everybody has their own little thing sure Sure. In terms of, sti of, of, of stimulation, artistic, creative stimulation, does the natural world touch you, make you good, influence your creative juices? Uh, I'll for, I have a, I'm, I, when I was 21, I met uh, a woman who turned out I fell in love with and I married, and she's a pianist. So music mm -hmm. became always a major part of my life. Oh. Uh, and then in somewhere in the mid-70s, we moved to to Carmel, California, uh, and there's something called the Pacific Ocean out there, mm -hmm. and Big Sur, and all mm -hmm. that stuff, which, as a personal pleasure, yes, and enjoyment and discovery of nature, of course, that's wonderful. Whether it had an effect on my work, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I tried to emulate any of that. I don't mm -hmm. think I tried to express any of that through my work. It works really quite a personal thing that uh, mm -hmm. I lock myself in a studio, and mm -hmm. that's my little journey there. It, yeah, so that's what I, that's that's the influence is the work. As far as inspiration, do, do, do you fe do you get inspired and you start to paint, or do you just sit down at the the the, the, the canvas? And I'm I'm pretty uh, boring. <laughs> 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 I go to work on Monday and I come home on Friday night, kind of thing, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and there are objectives, and there are journeys, and there are I mean, there's a whole gamut of experiences that are involved in right. that. Uh, and ultimately, that process creates its own momentum. Okay. And there are paintings that inspire me. That I, I, I do. I'm as I'm doing one piece, I may see something I want to do in another piece. If I'm frustrated with something, I may try something completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, but the journey is really within those four walls of the the, the, the studio, mm -hmm. and it creates it creates the pattern and it, and the desires. Well, being Dutch, of course, there's a great lineage of of, of du fam Dutch master painters, yeah. and and, and did you so you started out looking at some Victorian stuff and trying to emulate that. Yeah, style I think that was I think that was part of you know the the, the poster series of of the '60s, and the, you know a lot of drawing was being done. If you if you, I don't know if you were in familiar with any of that, but I I just enjoyed the drawing and I liked the flow of that. Uh, but when it came to painting, it was a whole different process, and somewhere in that. The early paintings, it was kind of ge not really geometric, but there was kind of an interaction uh, with brushwork, and then the brushwork disappeared. I was just more interested in, in the color. The color became more and more important over time. Ah, which leads me into uh, my next question. I, I, you are very color, I, I don't know what, what the word is, but but the colors of your work are have something very special about them to me when i look at them I, it's psych like the they're psychedelic all right okay then that's what it is <laughs> that, that's no what, that's i mean how, how to describe all that i mean mm -hmm. i'm i'm uh I, I i didn't take classical studies but i didn't still st study albers or anything like that but uh i discovered in my own experience for myself mm -hmm. that color is not a static thing it's a process mm. and uh, so the same thing goes for art it's not a thing it's a process mm -hmm. it's, it's it's happening mm -hmm. it's t life is happening nothing stops right and color is very much a symbol of that it's never the same it's it's purely subjective and it's constantly changing and evolving we ourselves have a tendency to freeze things and use them as structural ways of thinking. Yes. Color is not one of those things, but we do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see an infant laying in a crib, you know, they're seeing all sorts of things. But eventually over time we say that's not important or that is important. My paintings kind of remind a little bit of that experience of seeing things that you normally see but you dispose oh. because it's not practical. But the paintings kind of open that up. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that whole process gets into the the aspect of meditations or perhaps in healing and a lot of my work ends up in in the community hospital for example because there is a, a connection of of well-being and, mm -hmm. and optimism i think that comes out of color yes 
and uh, there may be other qualities mm -hmm. uh, over time. I think I, I, I don't know what will come of that, but I think there's certainly that process of uh, people discovering their own process in seeing color mm -hmm. and making color happen and seeing how, it, how they themselves are not necessarily in control of it, but they can observe their own process in it. I think there's a feedback loop in that that makes it fascinating. I think it makes them feel elated mm -hmm. and feel better, and hopefully that, that's a good thing. I mean, I, I hope. <laughs> I, I'm sure it is, of course. And the, 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 some of your paintings are at the hospital. Right. Um, I, I was looking at, at, at a, a picture you, sh you sent to me about an installation at the Monterey Museum of Art. Right, I did that in 99 with, uh, along with Jeffrey Beckham, who's a photog color photographer. Okay. And I've known Jeff since the late 70s, and we both uh, showed in this, a gallery here in Monterey called the Bruised Reed, which some people may recall oh. on Alvarado Street, mm -hmm. which was one of the few modernist galleries in town. And uh, we kind of spent time talking for years, and then we went our separate ways for a while. We came back together somewhere in the 80s, mm -hmm. late 80s, early 90s, uh, and it turned out we were both working in the same vein of color. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. How that happened, we don't, you know, it's kind of like what came first, chicken or egg. But, right. Uh, we both were interested in, Jeff worked with color and uh, worked with Mayan color, Mediterranean color, and developed books, wrote about the, the effects of color and the social and, and contextual aspects of color. Meanwhile, I was just playing in color. <laughs> and, uh, I love it. You call it playing and, and you're creating masterpieces and, and well, it's, it's so beautiful. Well, I enjoy, I, I mean, for me, it's a very selfish thing. It's a very mm -hmm. internal thing. I, I assume by doing it and getting it out and you know, you kind of have to, to make a living, because mm -hmm. if I don't sell them, I don't paint. I have to go be a busboy or something, which is about all I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, 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 an int it's, it's a fascinating way to have to balance life, that's for sure. Uh, well, when it comes to your senses, you mentioned something about music. You, you find, do you, are you inspired by music at all? Does it touch you? you oh yeah, completely, completely. I mm -hmm. mean, if, if there was a second part of my life, music would have been part of that. But I married a real mu a musician, and I realized that what I had been doing as, as a musical person was pretty minimal, was mm -hmm. very instinctual. And all I think, right. I, actually, my painting is pretty instinctual, too. I've sort of developed that out of my own little world. Uh, but music is a major part of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think what we're talking about, what the paintings are about, is creating kind of a visual music. I mean, that's been talked about before. Kandinsky and a few other artists have talked about it. And usually it's more about spots and locations and movement. Mm -hmm. I'm literally trying to get some vibratory quality out of it, out mm -hmm. of the color. Really? And that's why they kind of do that thing. Okay. And, and my reaction to, to your work is I, 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 it's like it's a magnet for my eyes. Yeah. I, I start looking at it, and I think the meditation... Uh, uh, part that you mentioned earlier, uh, it really comes through to me now. That's why, uh, you know, I, f yeah, I feel I, so... I think it, uh, there's a connection of a nonverbal experience in yes. that. And that's yes. why I use the term psychedelic. It's, it's you know, there's a... Uh, I was just talking to someone yesterday, Rick Carter, who uh, works, works in film, is a production designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was reading a book called How to Change Your Mind. Mm. Which is dealing a lot with the new the new concept of utilizing psychedelic drugs from the '60s, but using it for therapeutic purposes and healing purposes. Uh -huh. But there seems to be something about getting the brain into the into a certain state that does help people to deal better with their own life experiences, such as illness and, mm -hmm. and, and death, and, mm -hmm. and uh, just generally. Much like meditation, helps a lot of people clarify themselves in their in their life process. And if I, I would compare, in fact, uh, your, your paintings uh, to like mandala, the, 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 the symbols that people look at uh, sometimes when they meditate. Yeah. I've tried that before. Oddly enough, those mandalas I looked at didn't work. Your paintings work. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's, it, there's a million theories. I don't right. think any one of them is right or wrong. I think you find a process that, you know, we're, no, we're all different. That's right. And yeah. There's a different training process in our brains and there's a different mm -hmm. education process than Jeanette, who knows. But uh, I don't really paint them to say they're medita meditative. Right. I paint them because that's what I do. And, right. And I do the paintings, and one leads me to the next one. And some are repeats, some are old ideas mm -hmm. redone because I s didn't do something right the first pl time, I thought. So oh, okay. I, I changed them. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a selfish world in some ways, but the idea is, that is there's a communication, and there's a... Yes. What I, what I delight in when I do the pieces or what I 
find at a certain point in the pieces, I hope translates to someone who sees the pieces. That we share that experience. Okay. Do you, do, so, so you you create when you create something, you you want it to elicit or create an experience in, right. in, in the viewer. Yeah. Uh, is that an experience that you also that you oh, yeah. have? Oh yeah. Uh, while you're painting. Yeah, it's then? the only connection I have. Okay. If it's not happening for me, it's probably not happening for anybody else, particularly. Okay. I mean, finding that conversation is always the challenge of any artistic form: is finding a way to maintain your own journey and realizing that your journey is connected to someone else's journey mm -hmm. and right. that they can find it too. So mm -hmm. there's an aspect of theater in there, there's an aspect of uh, introspection, there's an aspect of uh, wandering and wandering, you know, there's, there's all those things going on simultaneously, but getting, uh, getting that to work is the challenge of, of the creative, the artist part. As far as this area is concerned, I find this area just so stimulating in a good way. There is just so much talent here, um, artistic talent, uh, scientific talent. Uh, it just seems to be bustling. And for me, I, I, I somewhat believe in that vortex of energy theory, mm. that there's a vortex somewhere, you know, well, down by Big Sur or something. It, it's a small town. <laughs> <laughs> and the, but the vortex is very nature-oriented, which is interesting. Yes, yes. You know, and there's been lots of theories about that between the Farallon Islands and San Francisco mm -hmm. and this area, too, that there is a, some sort of power structure or something going on. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a clue, but mm -hmm. I have certainly <clears throat> found that living here is by no means any reason to complain for anything. <laughs> uh, that That... We know we're living in a world today where you you know the suffering that goes on and the difficulties that go on in the world and it's 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 very uh, opening to realize how fortunate we are here and somewhere there there's not really a connection with what I do to helping that world directly mm -hmm. but uh, I have no reason <laughs> in what I do to complain. <laughs> okay, right. And right. so I, I don't try to create beauty per se, but I think it's important to keep reminding people that mm. there is beauty and you can make beauty. Poor cultures that suffer a lot in historically, you can look at, they still try to create beauty. There's still right. an attempt to celebrate living yes. through various forms. I don't want to feel guilty because I have those things, mm -hmm. but I want to be very grateful that those things are possible here. Well, you do create beauty, Lucas Block, and thank you so much <laughs> for you. being here. Please come back and see us. I shall. Thank you. Okay. We will be right back. <laughs>